Here is what the truth is. This is your account. This is your account. This is your account. Your account. Your account. Yours. Everyone in this room was not supposed to have a Nat 5. If I had not done what I did, I even gave you Moonlight Nat 5s. Now look at your accounts. They are stronger than ever. We can redistribute power where we see fit. Free to play rule. Not the way. Now, if any of you would like to follow the code of the gotcha to the letter, I invite you to spend your currency and get nothing out of it. That is what this user demands. Otherwise, shoot this motherfucker. I'll break you into a thousand pieces. Fall asunder. I won't miss. You've made it this far, but no further. What's going on, guys? It is your boy Cash. Put put your guns down. Do not. Don't you? Come on, damn it, damn it. It was a joke. <laughs> just, just. Woo! Okay, I don't know. I, that, that, I hope you guys enjoyed that. It was really fun. I missed that movie. Let, yo, hit, hit me up in the comments if you've seen that movie. I, I, I might watch that again. We should all watch it again. Anyway, we have the ambitious city lord of Perlin, Lilius uh, Palutia. I think, yeah, Lilius Palutia. If you guys saw the story, we, we did her written in blood side story. Really good one. I still think it's one of the best side stories that ever came out. And this character is definitely not one of the best ones that come out. But we're here to talk about her and all her little cool stuff. She's a very unique character. I don't really care how useful some characters are, but sometimes it's just really cool to see how unique they actually are. What they bring to the table and, you know, things of that nature. That's that that's what's important. I don't care if a character... That's why I'm going to bring Furious right back. Even They have like a beef, you know? But Furious didn't bring anything necessarily new to the table. He's just a really good character with other stuff that other characters already have kind of thing. Lilius has weird stuff. I would say she's probably less <laughs> useful than Furious is, but you know, people are finding ways to use her. So as you can see, I'm just pulling up the stats here. So let's look at her beautiful base stats when awakened. 821 attack, who cares? 6751 HP, good stuff. Speed is at 110, which is amazing for what she's meant to do. Also just, you know, having over 100 speed is good. Having 110 is even better. As you can see here, her effectiveness goes up a little bit, and that's pretty much it for the base stats. So with a little bit of assistance of the speed, that's all you really need to do. And I'll actually go into, once we have to go through the skills, what they do, and then we'll, it'll make it easier to go through what kind of gear you're supposed to put on this character. But let's just go over to the best part. The best of the best of the best, sir. I'll show you who's in charge. Ooh, she's... She just looks cool. I love the like the the shield. Let's check out the S1, which is going to be follow me. Charge takes the lead and attacks, triggering a dual attack from a random ally. Damage dealt increases proportional to the caster's max HP. As you can see, there's nothing but damage, 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 damage. It's actually one of the cooler animations in the game, in my opinion. Look at that. Just looks really smooth. Like she's like, it's like she's shadow stepping to a certain degree. It just looks really cool. Next up is the S2 defensive formation. Acquire two souls, five turns. Deploys a divine weapon, granting a barrier to the caster for two turns before a 85% chance to provoke the enemy for two turns. And you can soul burn it for 20, which is a bit hefty in my opinion, and it will ignore effect resistance. That's if you really want to provoke the land. And this is where her effectiveness comes in that she gets in. And then also here too, I kind of forgot that this had a chance to happen. 85, you can bring it up to 100%. You can also knock the cooldown down to four turns. I feel like this is not that it's not a useful skill, but you just won't see it as often. It's a nice in between. I just like the, the it looks really cool, very cool visual. 
that same purple shield. So just looks really cool. It's a nice skill. It's pretty much an in-between if you know you're not S1ing, but for most of the time it's just S3, S1, and then you S2 in a situation. I feel like you're S2ing more for the provoke than you are for the barrier itself. The barrier is nice because it happens regardless, but you're usually using it because you kind of want to provoke a target. It's a two-turn provoke at that, so it is really good. Definitely good to stop a enemy from using a skill but you're most likely bringing Julius in because of the s3 ready load fire acquired three souls which is pretty cool and it's a five turns going down to four if you mola it up and everyone just got a billion molas so if you have her hey, maybe you want to invest in some Lilius. now this one dispels all debuffs on all the allies which is great so if you have any any funky doo-doo on your characters that will just go away immediately and then commands the perlin army to fire on all enemies Decreasing combat readiness by 25%, which is really good as well for the effectiveness that you get for free through awakening and inflicting damage according to the attack of the hero with the highest attack. It also gives her 50% combat readiness so you can pretty much S3 and then go into something pretty pretty quickly into another S2 or S1. So you don't need to S1 or S2 in the beginning. It's, it's no reason that you would ever need to do that unless you really would rather provoke a target. But yeah, right. Unless you have that soul burn or she has very high effectiveness, your provoke might not land. So this one is just bread and butter. Let's check it out as we've seen many times. Ugh. This looks too good. It looks way too good. It just looks phenomenally good. Now, when it comes down to this, obviously I'm gonna do my due diligence in this video and we're gonna go and check all, well, I'm not gonna check all of them in video, but I'm gonna go check all the characters, you know, the ones that don't start with Gunther. <laughs> I'm gonna check all the characters and see the highest ones and I'm gonna put them in the video because obviously there are certain characters that are gonna make this do crazy amounts of damage over others just because of their raw base attack like they just have high base attack and then you give them a bunch of attack and then they're gonna skyrocket all right so let's start at the tippity top gunther is the highest base attack in the game plus with his passive he's literally the best one if you're trying to do the cheese chat of having an absurd amount of damage on lilius's s3 you guys know i'm not a showcase kind of guy i like to just kind of present stuff i don't showcase it i saw there are plenty of videos i saw ten haas i think that ydcb has some has one and very many other creators if i miss someone feel free to link it in the in the comment section i really don't care I, i'm not trying to say don't look at them come to me but i personally <laughs> don't have the time to always build up these units to showcase half the stuff but i do like to bring you some of the background facts yes mm -hmm. so gunther is number one ludwig comes in number two at 14 12. there you guys go 14 12. the next three funny enough all come in at 1359 first one is going to be samia or Sermia, whatever. Moonlight Ken, 1359. And last but not least, Tenebria. Tenebria is also 1359. So Sumia, Moonlight Ken, and Tenebria are 1359. Next up are two more that are 1316, which is Basar, and Lulu, or 1316. And there's one more tax bracket. <laughs> <laughs> one more tax bracket i'm just trying to give you guys as many choices as far as characters that you're going to want to run with lilius to really bring out that s3 so i just wanted to be a little bit thorough the last tax bracket is going to be 1283 which is going to be vildred arbiter vildred as well kisei and last but not least lydica these characters have 1283 now characters under that are about like at least for the nat fives they're 1228 Nat 5, that's like says, Cigarette, uh, Specimen says, Violet, Vivian. Those characters are 1228. As far as the four stars, they start off the highest is 1252, which is Clarissa and Guider Aether. And last, sadly, Gunther is 1426 for three stars, but it drops all the way to 1244, which is Misty Chain. So just, just giving you guys like a little heads up as far as like the characters that you want to use. There's one character that does not have particularly high attack, but I do suggest that you use her with Lilius just because. And that is Yuna. And not actually because like Yuna is a great character or something like that. If you look at her base stats, it's 1158. I am not saying that she's going to be <laughs> your highest attack because it's very likely that she won't be. 
but just for the shits and giggles and because I think it would be funny, remember the S2 has a exclusive equipment that can give AoE greater attack. Has a 30% chance each to grant allies increased attack greater for two turns when using upgrade. Yuna is supposed to be like a fast character, so if you have her go first, you have Lilius, you have Yuna, you have your one of the attackers that I mentioned, and I don't know who your fourth slot is, if it's Arena and if it's if it's Guild Wars, that's pretty much it, right? <laughs> Your three, your three motley crew, and you just sweep people out. That option to me is more or less if you just want to have some fun to see if you can get like this absurd amount of damage that you necessarily couldn't get because there's no way to get attack greater on you know a random unit. Even Alexa's basket is only for one turn, so it wouldn't really work with Lilius. So I just thought I'd mention it just because I thought it was funny. Now we're going up to the beautiful part that is the gear. What kind of gear would you put on Lilius? Now, we're, I know what you guys are all thinking, attack. No, I'm just kidding. Most people know that you really don't need to give her much of anything <laughs> outside of pretty much like speed. Speed's gonna be really good. You want her to, she's not gonna go necessarily first. You usually will still need a little bit of help from a CR pusher to a certain degree, depending on how fast you can get her. But her base speed is 110, so more speed, more power to you. You might not wanna go the exact speed set, but going speed is fine because the damage on her S3 has pretty much nothing to do with her at all. It has to do with the highest attacker. So you don't need to build attack. Her S1, her S1 scales off her max HP. I did not mention that, I do apologize. But her S1 scales off her max HP. You might as well get some HP when you're going into the gear. You don't have, I wouldn't say that you need to get this, but it will make it do a little bit more damage, but you don't have to focus her on damage. What she needs is speed, and last but not least, crit. You want that, <laughs> you definitely want that s32 crit not only do you want the crit you want some crit damage as well you could pretty much just focus her solely on that and like i said go look at the videos they're amazing to see her pulling damage that i only see ludwig pull off as far as an aoe cleave nuke in one hit kisei judge kisei does like does an okay job you know in two turns doing it but she can pretty much do that and she's she's just sitting there she's literally just kind of sitting there and it allows you to take, the cool thing about Lilius is that it allows you to take a non DPS unit's turn and turn it into a heavy DPS turn. And then if you need her to do something tank, what it, you know tank does, which is provoking and, and giving a shield to herself and things of that nature, that's really cool. That's actually really, really cool to do in my opinion. That's why I like her so much is because it takes like, there's not many times where your support or your defensive unit does DPS. And on top of that, she cleanses when she's doing that. She cleanses your team, she lowers the combat readiness of them, does a massive amount of damage. It's just a lot that she provides for your team. She's a really, really good unit. But that's pretty much, I don't want to dwell too much on the gear because it's really not too much. <laughs> not much here, if I'm being honest. It's literally not that much. It's usually speed, crit, crit damage. HP on the subs if it's there don't worry about it. It's a good thing your s1 will do more damage That's about it. Nothing too crazy to explain here. Of course. Yes, you can go the immunity set because I always forget where it is There it is immunity sets not that bad. See this is a terrible room for Destina. I don't need attack crit would be nice speed uh, World up the attack would be better as effective resistance But just so you guys are aware of what I'm talking about and my favorite part is the artifacts oh whew, i love doing artifacts because this is what makes your lilius a little bit different from mine even though i'm suggesting stuff and then you can be like yeah that sounds about right and then you just do it so don't even do elbrus ritual because when you duel when you s1 and it has a auto duel attack thing on it it won't bring the other character on a counter i wish it just doesn't sorry holy sacrifice is not that bad of an option not the best, but definitely not that bad of an option if she happens to die and then she can come back with the S3 or S2, kind of keep herself alive. If you have a healer that heals off their S1 so she can maybe dual attack heal, you know, this is more of a safety precaution. She doesn't get anything from being low HP, so it's not the best option. But if you have it and you don't have any other thing that I'm going to mention, why not put the Holy Fact Sacrifice on? Wow, we haven't done it. We haven't done a knight thing in it so long because I completely forgot about this artifact. Obviously, this one's pretty good if you're doing any type of PvE content. It less it lessens the damage that you're taking if you happen to have the sort of Ezra. This is a old kind of artifact. I forgot whose it was that it came out on, but it's pretty good. Obviously, 30% less damage taken by the caster, keeping that unit alive for a long time. So obviously pretty good if you're focusing on PvE. Her own artifact is also pretty good, specifically 
for PvP, it really has not that good in PvE just because it's only at the start of the battle do you get a shield. I did the math in her video is that the shield will actually be decent based on how high the attack of the actual person that she's giving a shield is. So it protects that unit for the first turn that they have. Obviously, if it's like Gunther, Gunther can't be crit. Well, I just saw YDCBU's video a little, a couple days ago, and yes, for some reason, Gunther can still be crit, even with his passive leveled up and having DN's crit resist buff, but still can be crit. If a knight had this artifact, then Gunther has a higher survivability because obviously you're going pure DPS, pure attack, 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 attack on that one unit that's with Lilius. So it's not that bad to have this on it. It's actually not that bad for any knight that's in there because I feel like the knight's artifacts are very flexible based on the team comp that you have in there. Hillig Lance, I think is a pretty good option. If your allies are getting single target attacked, it will allow you to bump up. I think that this artifact is slightly dependent on what you're fighting though, because if you notice that a team comp has a lot more AOE than single targets, then you're not going to get as much boost out of it. But still, it's pretty good that every time a single target attack is, whether it's a dual attack, a counter attack, and as long as it's a single target, you're going to get a 10% boost if this is maxed out. So I think that that's pretty good. You can definitely give yourself and steal some turns with this. Uh, Aureus and Adamant Shield, I'm not going to go into each one. They're pretty much both the same. If you're looking to have her not if you're looking to have her save or reduce the damage of her teammates a little bit, I don't know if you really want her to do that because her provoke and her shield is only for herself. So it's more she's trying to absorb the damage. So I guess you can say Aureus will be good for that. Adamant Shield, I probably wouldn't put on her. For more ease of destruction, Midnight Bloom is a really good option on her. Give herself some crit and give her allies some crit so they can clean up anything after her or even help her with the cleaver or anything like that. So 16% crit rate that you don't have to put into your gear is awesome. I feel like when it comes down to PvP, at least one character on the team should have this artifact, just if you're trying to cleave. If your gear is top notch and you have the portrait of the saviors, that's also good. As you guys know, it's one of the best ways to cleave from the beginning of the round. If you get those early turns, it will do 20% more damage because they all will have 50% HP because they'll have 100% HP. So it's really, really good if you can get that turn and this will do a lot of damage and assist with the cleave. And if you unfortunately missed out on the event to get the Portrait of the Saviors, Exorcist Tonfas is just a slightly less version of it, 16% more damage instead of I think 20 it was. So if you don't have that, you came into the game a little bit late, I'm surprised they don't put those in like the shop, like the powder shop. Like, oh, you missed this? Well, just here for a bunch of powder or whatever. If you don't have that, you can just use Exorcist Tonfas. It's a three star, so you it will always be in the game and you can pretty much do the same thing. All right, and that is our home girl, Lilius. It was a blast doing the intro. It was a blast actually researching and checking all the attacks of all the characters. Let me know what your Lilius team comp is. Obviously, I know a lot of people are using Gunther, but I wonder if any of you guys were using any of the other characters that I mentioned. So I can use my Moonlight Ken to do the same thing that most people are doing. It's not as high as attack as Gunther's gonna be. Ludwig is still a good option, I don't have Ludwig. I have Tenebria, she's getting buffs on buffs on buffs on buffs, so that'd be great. I do have, I think all of us now have Yuna, so I, I could try that out because my gear is probably not as good as other people's gear, so I might try the BS with the S2. Plus, Lilius's dual attack might bring Yuna and then give Comet readiness to everyone. It could really work out pretty well, but I would only do that if Yuna has the Bloodstone artifact, so I, it would make a little bit more sense for that to happen. And I know a lot of people have a Vildred, and that's kind of what I like about her. You don't really necessarily need the best attack to do that. Like You can still pull it off. Yes, you don't need the 1426, but the 1283s, the 1316s, those are still going to be really good for that S3. And on top of that, I did not mention, I apologize, is that she gives a memory imprint of attack. So... If you, you know, you know, dropped a little bit more cake than that that was needed at the party, you know, <laughs> you might actually have some memory imprints and, and give additional attack to everybody else. Let me know if this guide helped you in any way, shape, or form. If it did, leave a like, comment, subscribe if you haven't. If it didn't, you're a liar. You're you're a liar. I love you. Please don't dislike my video. It, it helps me feed the kids. Anyway, I don't have kids. Secondly, anyway, hope you guys enjoyed. And remember that every day at the casino is your lucky day, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.